This application information session is for the Justice for Families program solicitation that was posted on or about November 6, 2018. It is strongly recommended that you read the full solicitation prior to listening to this information session. Application submissions are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on January 8, 2019. Applications will be submitted through grants.gov. The Justice for Families program was authorized in the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act of 2013. The program supports activities to improve the capacity of communities and courts to respond to families impacted by domestic violence, sexual assault, dating violence, stalking, and in some cases, child sexual abuse with court-based and court-related programs, supervised visitation and safe exchange by and between parents, training and technical assistance for people who work with families in the court system, civil legal services, and the provision of resources in juvenile court matters. Applicants may address the following purpose areas. One, supervised visitation and safe exchange, three, training for court-based and court-related personnel, four, juvenile court resources, five, court and court-based programs and services, six, civil legal assistance, and eight, training within civil justice system. OVW is interested in funding projects that take a coordinated approach to helping families victimized by sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking as they navigate the justice system. In order to help achieve this coordinated approach, applicants may propose either a standard project or a comprehensive project. For a standard project, applicants must propose activities under purpose area number one, supervised visitation and or safe exchange, or five, Court. If an applicant is proposing to provide supervised visitation and or safe exchange services, Purpose Area 1, the applicant must also propose activities under at least one additional purpose area. The court's purpose area, Purpose Area 5, can be addressed on its own or in combination with another purpose area. You may apply to any or all of the subparts of this purpose area. However, OVW will not consider applications that only propose pro se victim assistance programs under purpose area 5B or only propose education and outreach programs under purpose area 5E. Additionally, purpose areas 3 or 8, the training purpose areas, cannot be solely combined with Purpose Area 5E, but may be combined if other purpose areas or subparts of 5 are also applied for. A project that only proposes training and education will not be considered. Lastly, due to the restrictions on providing civil legal services, no more than 50% of the proposed project a project cannot propose activities solely from Purpose Area 6 and Purpose Area 5B pro se victim assistance. For comprehensive projects, applicants must propose activities under Purpose Areas 1, Supervised Visitation and or Safe Exchange, 5, Court, and 6, Civil Legal Services. Applicants may include additional purpose areas in a comprehensive project application if they choose, but are required to include purpose areas 1, 5, and 6, and should note the restrictions from the previous slide. Projects addressing only pro se victim assistance programs <coughs> under purpose area 5B and civil legal assistance under Purpose Area 6 must count all associated costs toward the 50% cap on civil legal assistance 
described under Purpose Area 6 in the solicitation. A project in which the primary focus is on providing civil legal assistance is not appropriate for the Justice for Families program and will be removed from consideration. It would be better suited for the OBW Legal Assistance for Victims program whose solicitation should be released on or about November 20, 2018. Applications proposing activities in the following OVW priority areas will be given special consideration during the review process. One, reduce violent crime against women and promote victim safety. Examples of projects under this priority area include addressing Purpose Area 5A in developing specialized courts, consolidated courts, dockets, or intake centers. Two, increase the response to victims of human trafficking. Examples of projects under this priority area include training judges, advocates, and others who work with victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking to recognize when those victims may also be victims of sex trafficking or other severe forms of trafficking in persons, or developing a specialized docket addressing these crimes. Or three, increase efforts to combat stalking. The solicitation lists specific activities that are outside the scope of the Justice for Families program and will not be supported by the program's funding. Applications that propose activities that are deemed to be substantially out of scope may receive a deduction in points during the review process or may be eliminated from consideration entirely. Additional details can be found in the solicitation companion guide. The grant award period is 36 months. Budgets must reflect a 36 month project activity period and the total estimated funding on the SF424 must reflect 36 months. Generally, the award period will start October 1, 2019. Funding levels under the Justice for Families program for FY 2019 are as follows. Standard projects up to $550,000 for 36 months. Comprehensive projects up to $650,000 for 36 months. OVW estimates that it'll make up to 15 standard grant awards and three to seven comprehensive grant awards for an estimated $11 million. New applicants are those that have never received direct funding under the Justice for Families program, including current and former OVW safe havens and OVW court grantees or subgrantees or Justice for Families grantees whose previous funding expired more than 12 months ago. Continuation applicants are those that have an existing or recently closed within the last 12 months award under the Justice for Families program and meet the eligibility requirements. Continuation funding is not guaranteed. Additionally, continuation applicants with a substantial amount of remaining funds more than 50% at the time of application submission without adequate justification may not be considered for funding in FY 2019. Please note that grant recipients that receive funding under the Justice for Families program for 36 months in FY 2017 or FY 2018 are not eligible to apply. Eligible applicants are limited to states, units of local government, not including law enforcement, courts, including juvenile courts, but does not include prosecutors' offices, Indian tribal governments, nonprofit organizations, legal service providers, and victim service providers. Please note again, a law enforcement agency is not considered a unit of local government, and a prosecutor's office is not considered the court regardless of where they're located and therefore cannot be considered the court partner, 
or apply on behalf of a court. All applicants for the Justice for Families program are required to submit a certification of eligibility. Applicants proposing projects under purpose areas 1, 4, 5, or 6 will be required to submit additional certification letters. Please read the Other Program Description Requirements section of the solicitation very carefully to determine which letters may be required for your application. Please contact the Justice for Families program at ovw.jff at usdoj.gov if you have any questions about certification letters. All applications for the Justice for Families program must include formal partnerships with both, one, a domestic violence or sexual assault victim service provider, and two, a court. Applications that do not meet this requirement will not be eligible for Justice for Families program funding and will be removed from consideration. Partnerships are formally demonstrated through an MOU and in some cases a letter of commitment. Here are some partnership scenarios to help determine what partnerships are required. If a court is the lead applicant, it must have a domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider as a project partner. If a domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider is the lead applicant, it must have a court as a partner. If the lead applicant is neither a domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider nor a court, it must have a partnership with both a domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider and a court. Applications that do not meet this requirement will not be eligible for Justice for Families program funding and will be removed from consideration. Please review the eligible applicant section very carefully for the definitions of a court and victim service provider. Please note that a prosecutor's office is not a court. In addition to the definition provided in eligible applicants section for victim service providers, they must also include to provide direct services to victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, or stalking as one of their primary purposes and have a demonstrated history of effective work in this field address a demonstrated need in their communities by providing services that promote the dignity and self-sufficiency of victims, improve their access to resources, and create options for victims seeking safety from perpetrator violence, and activities that compromise victim safety. Under the application requirements, please note there are a few differences between standard and comprehensive projects. Standard projects have a 20-page limit, while comprehensive projects have a 25-page limit. Additionally, budgets must include funds to attend OVW-sponsored training and technical assistance in the amount of $15,000 for standard projects and $20,000 for comprehensive projects for states and $20,000 for standard projects, and $25,000 for comprehensive projects for territories, Hawaii, and Alaska. Recipients of OVW funds must comply with applicable federal civil rights laws, which among other things prohibit recipients from discriminating on the basis of national origin and disability. This includes taking reasonable steps to ensure meaningful access to grantees programs and activities for individuals with disabilities, deaf individuals, and persons with limited English proficiency. To meet this priority, applications must include activities designed to ensure accessibility and costs to support those activities. Additionally, Applicants must include funds or other resources in their budget 
to support activities to ensure access for individuals with disabilities, deaf, hard of hearing individuals, and persons with limited English proficiency. Applicants are generally required to submit an MOU, a document containing the terms of the partnership and the roles and responsibilities between two or more parties. However, a court that is precluded from signing onto an MOU may submit a letter of commitment in lieu of an MOU. Please note that letters of commitment submitted in lieu of an MOU under circumstances other than those described in the solicitation will not be accepted. The solicitation provides the circumstances under which an applicant may be required to submit an MOU, letters of commitment, or both. For example, if the court is the lead applicant and unable to sign an MOU, all project partners should submit letters of commitment and no MOU is required. If the court is a project partner and unable to sign an MOU, the lead applicant should still submit an MOU signed by the applicant and any other non-court partners, and the court should submit a letter of commitment. If the domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider is the lead applicant and the only project partner is the court, the court should submit a letter of commitment, but the lead applicant is not required to submit an MOU or letter of commitment. The solicitation provides detailed guidance on what an MOU and or letters of commitment should contain, including formal partnerships with both a domestic violence and or sexual assault victim service provider and a court. Please contact the Justice for Families program at ovw.jff at usdoj.gov if you have any questions about MOUs or letters of commitment. Again, applications are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on January 8, 2019. It is strongly suggested that you start the submission process at least 48 hours before, but no later than 24 hours before January 8, 2019. Applications submitted after 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on January 8, 2019 will not be considered for funding. Please review the solicitation carefully and contact the Justice for Families program with any questions regarding the solicitation by emailing ovw.jff at usdoj.gov or by calling OVW at 202-307-6026. If you need technical assistance with Grants.gov, please contact the Grants.gov customer support line at 1-800-518-4726. This concludes the FY 2019 Justice for Families pre-application information session. <laughs>